So let's talk about subnet. So a network can be further uh, divided into uh, into subnet, smaller networks. Sub means smaller, and net here stands for network. So a uh, network administrator, depending upon the need, can divide a larger network into smaller networks because these smaller networks or subnets uh, can easily be handled. They're flexible. Um, bandwidth can be managed effectively, right? So each subnet, uh, when we divide a larger network into smaller network, each uh, smaller network or a subnet has uh, its unique address. And um, in class full addressing, we have class A, B, and C, uh, where we can use the host portion of uh, uh, in these classes to create a subnet, right? So this sub uh, uh, this this net here is for short of the networks, and obviously we know this that the sub stands for uh, smaller, right? So subnet means smaller networks. Okay. So uh, so uh, in subnets, uh, the subnet part is basically the higher order bits. Right, and all the machines in a subnet share the same subnet part, has the same has uh, uh, the same value of the higher order bits. Right, so for example, I can say uh, this represents the this represents the subnet part, and uh, these bits represents the uh, host portion. Right. Uh, similarly. Um, here we can identify that this is a network involving a router where we have three subnets, right? So this means a machine in one subnet can interact with the other machine without intervening the router. For example, if this machine wants to communicate with the other machine here, so this machine needs not to uh, involve router here. So here we have two sub, three subnets, one, two, they're also highlighted in the diagram, right? So using subnets, we can divide a larger network into smaller networks. As it, in this diagram, we have divided this network into uh, three uh, subnets. Uh, if subnetting, uh, if we do not uh, implement subnetting, so probably this is one uh, large network, right? Having all the yeah, all uh, having all the host in one network, right? So, but when we have divided it into Subnets, so this means these are three different smaller networks, and here the machines can effectively manage, uh, uh, and where one machine has to communicate the other machine. So in this case, I do not need to involve uh, this router here. Right. So uh, what do you think? How many uh, subnets are there in this diagram? Yes, you're right. Uh, one, two, three, and remember, these WAN interfaces between the router also needs to be represented with subnets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So here, if I want to do subnetting, how many number of subnets I need to create here? Is yes, right? I need to create six subnets. So the question is, how subnetting is done? Because we know that the network part is assigned by the uh, American Registry for Internet Names and Numbers. <clears throat> we cannot change it. So this means all we have with us is the host Part, host portion that we can play around with or we can borrow bits from in order to create subnets. So for example, this is a class, you can easily identify that this is a class uh, C address where uh, the first three octets represents the network part and this remaining octet uh, represents what? The host portion. So for the purpose of uh, subnetting, what we can do is we can borrow uh, bits from the Host portion and these bits now will become part of the uh, network bit, right? So these are the so we cannot change these bits uh, in the network part because these are assigned by uh, American Registry for Internet Names and Numbers. So so what we can do is uh, for the sake of subnetting, we can borrow some bits from the host portion here. So now these bits are called what? These bits are called subnet um, uh, field, right? Representing the subnet field, and now we are left with uh, uh, in this case, for example, five bits that we can use for the sake of uh, assigning IP addresses to uh, the machines inside a subnet. So the basic principle of uh, subnetting is to borrow 
bits from the force portion uh, to create uh, smaller networks within a larger network. So before we uh, start discussing and see how it is implemented, let's talk about a very important concept that we'll be using in subnetting and is called subnet mask. So subnet mask, uh, you can call it uh, an extended network prefix, right? It's uh, not an address, but um, it determines, it helps us. So it's a filter when applied on an IP address, it gives us the network address, right? For example, um, if, if a data is coming uh, to this router, and say this is the boundary router from another router uh, connected with the uh, internet. Right? So for example, this router is connected with uh, the internet through this router, say R2, this is R1, right? And if this R1 receives a, a you know, packet from the, from the internet, from say router R2 in this case, where the R1 should forward this packet to, Right? Either it should forward to the subnet uh, 223.1.1.4 or 223.1.2.0 um, uh, uh, or 223.1.3.27. Right. So on, on which interface it should forward it. Right. So in order to make this decision, router needs to have a subnet mask. Right. So subnet mask is a filter 